So, welcome back, and today I'm going to show you a tool, uh, multiple tools that I'm working on. The first one is called Make Your V, and the other one is called Make Seamless. This one already has uh, a new interface, this one does not. This here is heavily work in progress, right, but it works for basic maps. So, Make Your V should be clear that will create a new V layout, right? Very fast and very simple. You just have to press one button and provide a few informations, but that's not really hard here. And this one will create a seamless map from a baked map with this UV layout, right? So they work together, but there's a baking step in between. And this baking step is not limited to Blender. You can also bake it in Blender, but you can also use other tools. I created it actually for ZBrush to bake maps in ZBrush, right? But you can use any baker that supports um, arbitrary map sizes, right? Like 3840. And not it should not be limited to yeah, the power of two here. Okay, uh, Blender and ZBrush provide that feature. First of all, let me show you the problem with the yeah, traditional UV layout, right? Looks like this here, this mesh is not from me. It's very old, looks quite pretty. It's all quad, quads and it has a <laughs> pretty UV layout. But as I said in the last um, tutorial, you should avoid many cuts for displacement and this one has a lot of cuts right but yeah it's not really easy to cut this mesh into yeah just one two pieces right you have to cut off those horns here and this one and then this uh, it's a yeah complex mesh basically so anyway this here looks quite pretty but this has problems with seams and i rendered it out i will show you in a second this, uh, this one has also more problems, right? Let's say you want to distribute this over multiple UDEM tiles. Imagine the UDEM tiles here, right? There's no support for that in Blender. But then you have to rescale this and you have to pack this somehow and then you have to think about this. Then maybe you have to puzzle this again and again and again, right? And then you realize it's not enough and then so on. So it's quite yeah, time consuming, right? Okay, I baked off this map in ZBrush with an overpaint and I rendered it in cycles with displacement, right, with adaptive subdivision. And let me show it to you. Mm, where's the render? Here's the render result. Is it the first one? Yes. So that is the render with the UV layout, with the original UV layout. On the first look, it looks okay, right? But if you look a little closer, like this one here, you can see definitely a seam, right? And here, more seams. This one is actually also a seam, could be a detail, but it is a seam, right? <laughs> if you know the seamless model, then you will see the there's actually a huge difference right here. Also a seam, it's not really visible. I mean, if you put on a color map, this one won't be a problem actually, but there's a seam, right? And there it has also a seam, but you can't really see it. <coughs> but this one here is quite obvious. Okay, and here's also a seam. Uh, more like here, right? Anyway, you can't fix this. Uh, you, you can fix this with uh, stacking multiple displacement maps together, but this is quite complicated and it's not so easy for this mesh here. Anyway, let me demonstrate my script, right? It's all about the script here and it's heavily work in progress and it's just a demonstration and will most likely take a while until this one is released because I'm not really good at programming. <laughs> okay. You have to put in max subdivision, max UDEM tiles at the moment just one because the other script mm, does not work 100% with more maps, right? And the margin. The max subdivision is the max uh, subdivision you've sculpted on in ZBrush. This is actually one more right here, seven, but it's actually six in Blender, right? So you put that in so you can capture all the details because this will create a map size for you, right? It will provide the map size for you. You don't have to guess or so. It will provide a map size for you. And then the max UDEM tiles, we'll show you in a second. And the margin, this is important for texture caching, but that's not available in Blender yet, but it will be at some point. And then you need more margin for the map mapping stuff, right? But at the moment you could also use one it's not a difference, not really a difference, but I baked it with 16 to show you really what it does. Then there's UV map, the layout. Uh, it's, it's separated between displacement and color. There's a very minor difference, but there's a difference, so don't use color for displacement and so on. But yeah, 
there's no de demo also yet, it will take a while. Anyway, it's just a demonstration. And there is also an auto export feature that's obviously for ZBrush or any other baker. If you're in Blender, you don't need that really. Let me show you what it actually exports. Here it is. The name, the type, subdivision, level, size, and the margin, right? So you know all the details already in the name. So let's unwrap this. Uh, let me delete this one here. Those are the creative ones. So this is the original um, layout, right? And now let's just unwrap with the correct settings here. Done, right? Very fast. As you can see here, 0 0.034 seconds. And I will pro provide all also a few informations in the terminal, like the faces, UDM tiles, map size, coverage, 98%, subdivision level, margin, and so on. And then let's take a look at that. Looks like that, right? It's not for 2D painting, it's just for baking. You could paint in 2D something with a new V layout, right? And then bake it into that format, and that will be seamless, right? And let me demonstrate also the UDEM feature, right? You just put in max 10 UDEMs, you click on wrap, done, and then you have it distributed nicely over yeah, as many UDEM tiles you want, right? As you can see here, but this is not really good. 92% of coverage. So let's increase it to 100. Unwrap this again. And now you can see you, have, you don't have 100, you just have 98 because of the rounding stuff and so on. Anyway, it doesn't matter if you have 100 or 98. But you can see you have a coverage of 100%. The map size of 384, right? Very easy. That's it, actually, for the unwrapper. We could also bake this with zero, right? Oh, zero. Unwrap. And then you can see you have a perfect map, map actually. All the pixels, okay, except those, um, will be used, right? It's almost a perfect map. Anyway, let's put it back to the original ones. So then I baked out a map for this UV layout, right? In ZBrush, this one here, with an overpaint of 16. And yeah, you can see it's interpolated, right? And you can't really change that. And I rendered it. As you can see here, it's not interpolated. Okay, I rendered this. Um, where's the rendered result? And yeah, this is the original one, and here's the ZBrush version. And as you can see, this is even worse. <laughs> Hardcore seams right here. But yeah, there's no seam. Okay, there's a little bit of seam, right? But yeah, here's a seam. That's a no-go. This is really ugly, right? It's not really usable. But there are different seams, right, compared to the first version. Okay. And then I baked out the map that I need, and that looks like that. It's basically the same map, but without the overpaint. And the overpaint will be created by the Make Seamless script, right? So that's the map. Then you need to select the mesh, and at the moment you have to go into edit mode. And yeah, you don't have to select the map. The map is actually, there's no tool for loading the map. The map is just the name here. Anyway. Uh, you just have to press run script at the moment. And it will print also something. Take a look at the terminal here. Okay, let's just run this. It will load the maps. In this case, one map. Then we'll analyze the mesh, average the corner pixel, right? And then it will paint the edge pixels. And then it will paint the corner pixels. Right, and then it will create the map. And that's done. And here it is. Looks like that, right? It looks like the other map, but this one here is actually yeah, seamless. It's continuous, right? That's the same data as on the other edge. Where's the other edge? Oh, no, I have to... Let's pick one edge here. That's this, right? This is continuous. If you put that together, it, it will fit perfectly. Those are the same values, right? And that's the difference. And those ugly <laughs> squares here, those are extraordinary vertices. But that's fine to put a square here in here. You don't have to interpolate it, actually. I've tried it a few times. And at the moment, this is the best solution. And it's very fast. OK, the script is not very fast, but <laughs> anyway, it's faster than interpolating stuff. 
Yeah, and I rendered it, of course. Let me show you this. That's the important part, right? Uh, render result. Okay, and take a look at the seams here, right? And now this one is 100% seamless. Right, let's zoom in a little bit. And let's switch between the render, seams, no seams. Seams, oops, sorry. So here again, seams, no seams. And here you can see, there's actually a difference, right? There is a seam, it, it's very minor, but there is actually a seam. And if you look at the seamless model, right? That's perfect. Yeah, as I said, this is heavily work in progress and it will take a while to finish that because I'm not very good at programming. But yeah, that's the demo. Actually, I have more like this here, right? It's a huge mesh. Imagine to unwrap this one it will take a few seconds at least, or let's put it a different way. It will take longer than just this click of a button here. So as they already know there are no UV maps on it, as you can see. And let's just unwrap it with, let's say, Max Subdivision 6 UDIM tiles. Okay, let's put in a few UDIM tiles just for fun. And the margin of 16, right? Not exporting. And then just hit it. Done. Right? How long? 0.2 seconds. That's fast enough, I think. And let's take a look at this, actually. And there it is. UV layout with UDIM tiles. I don't do it for just for fun with 100. <laughs> okay, also done, same time. Right. I limit it to 100. You could go higher, but it's not really necessary. I mean, imagine 104K maps, that's quite a lot of <laughs> resolution. Okay, yeah, that's, that's actually the script. Is there more? Yes, there's more. Um, here's the image, actually. It's in for Okay, it's a 4K image. That's the UV layout, as you can see, individual squares. That's the wireframe, right? That's the subdivision surface model, very smooth. And that's the displaced model. And as you can see, no seams. Absolutely seamless. Okay, and the last thing, this one works for scalar displacement maps. Right, vector displacement maps for object space or world space. Uh, it works for color or masking, but it does not work for tangent vector displacement or for tangent normal mapping. It also works for object normal mapping. It doesn't work for uh, tangent stuff because the tangent stuff you can't pre-calculate this really, <laughs> right? So it doesn't work for that, unfortunately. But that's, yeah, it's not really a problem actually. And the last thing I want to show you is the color difference, right? Here's uh, a very tiny example. You can definitely see the color seams, right? It's a, it's a close-up, but there are seams. And with the fixed method, gone, no seams. Seamless, basically, right? And you can zoom in as much as you want, no seams, and it's rendered with a cubic interpolation. Also, also the displacement stuff here was rendered with cubic interpolation, right? Okay, yeah, that's it. Hopefully I can release this someday, <laughs> but it will take a while, right? But then you can render seamless maps. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.